grace and peace and spoiler alert for the movie The Absent-Minded Professor, a movie from 1943, well before I was born. So if you haven't seen it since it came out, you might want to hurry, get around to it. I don't want to spoil it for you from 1943. Um, but I, I had to get a Disney Plus account so I could see Hamilton and The Mandalorian. And while I was there, might as well check out some Disney classics. The Absent-Minded Professor. My wife loves Flubber, so, so I wanted to see it again. I remember it as a small kid. And uh, man, I gotta say, it holds up surprisingly well. Like a lot of older movies, the pacing is off. They just seem really slow or the characters seem stodgy and hard to relate to. They're just living in a totally different world. Uh, not true for this one. Um, the characters were like exaggerated, but their, their wants and their needs and the ways they went about them, uh, other than their treatment of women, uh, were like a exaggerated, cartoonish a little bit, but, but real and relatable and reasonable. And, and the cartoonishness worked for what I think the movie really is, which seems to be an exaggerated character study about different types of wisdom. Uh, so hopefully you're familiar if you've engaged in like, one of the best examples of it is uh, Dungeons and Dragons, where you have a difference between the int stat and the whiz stat, and it's possible to be high int, low whiz, uh, so, uh, one of the examples is that, um, high int is knowing that tomato is a fruit, high whiz is not putting it in a fruit salad, or, or another quote I like is, high int is knowing that Frankenstein is not the monster, high whiz is knowing that Frankenstein is the monster. Brainerd! is high int low whiz. He's your classic high int low whiz character. He knows stuff. He's, he's able to figure stuff out and do stuff and, and make it happen because of the stuff going on in his brain. He is a brain nerd, but he's low in focus and in memory. Um, and his, his social acumen is off because he doesn't live in the same world as everyone else. He is the absent-minded professor. And everyone else in his life is also following that kind of archetype. So he's got this rival in love who has a lot of knowledge about love. He, he can recite poetry about love and he knows the arts, but he doesn't have any knowledge of love. He, he, he doesn't have any, any intuitive understanding and connectedness and like practical wisdom for love. It's all theoretical. Um, the, the bad guy, the, this guy, is the opposite of Brainerd. He knows simple things, he knows money, but he, he doesn't have a sense of being able to figure things out. He, he doesn't have any kind of like practical ability, and this culminates near the end of the film when he literally can't figure out how not to jump. He, he, he won't stop jumping and like, it's all he's got to do. The basketball players could do it, but he just doesn't have, like he has a disability in that area and a massive ability in terms of money and, and financial systems and uh, that, the kind of simple technical knowledge. Um, and finally, there's the son, the, the kid, who, who can do sports and, and has that kind of technical knowledge. He, he knows how to, how to do things, how to, how to use his hands and how to use his body, um, but he, he can't do book learning. He, he doesn't have any of the stuff that Brainerd has. He's the opposite of Brainerd. He, he can uh, do the practical, he can do the memory, he can be a nice guy, he can pay attention to the fact that like other people have needs too, um, but he can't learn chemical formulas and do a good job in chemistry class. Well, what does that mean? What's the significance? Once we've figured out that that's what's going on in The Absent-Minded Professor, why is that good to know? Well, I'm gonna get brain nerdy on you and tell you that it connects deeply with ancient Greek. The Bible, 
was written in ancient Greek. And within ancient Greek, we don't have the one word we have in English for wisdom. We have four. So sometimes in the Bible, things are referred to with episteme, which is a, a scientific knowledge, a brain knowledge, understanding universal, invariable truths, being intelligent, being knowledgeable. Uh, sometimes we use the word techne, which applies to technical skills. So craftsmen have a lot of techne. Um, they, they know how to do things. They know what and where and how and when. Some wise people have Sophia. Sophia, and, and that's a word that's actually used for God, for holy wisdom. I went and visited the Hagia Sophia, the holy wisdom uh, church originally. Um, and that concerns universal truths. It concerns philosophy. Philosophy means love of Sophia, thinking in the abstract, thinking about nature and meaning and life. And then finally, there is phronesis. And, and phronesis is connected to, to praxis. It's connected to morals. It's connected to if this, then that. And, and what shall I do next? What's, what's the, the next best decision? How do I make dependent clauses and say, if this is true about Sophia, how do I put it together with my techne and make something new. And not all of us have all of that. We all have different levels of different sides of that that we're better and worse in. And it's a disappointing reality of our culture that we've kind of lumped it all into IQ uh, when there is so many different ways to be smart. And even independent of all the ways to be smart, what the absent-minded professor would tell us is that what ultimately matters is knowing to do the right thing. That's why Brainerd wins. He doesn't win by virtue of his flubber. He, nobody cares about his flubber. Certainly, his love interest doesn't. He is the one that his love interest wants to be with and put up with despite his terrible decisions because he's loyal, because he knows that doing the right thing is right. And at the end of the day, what else matters? I think that's a pretty good moral, if I do say so myself.